Welcome to Decades of Horror, the 1980s. What the F was that? This is episode 213, recorded August 10th, 2022. It wasn't Santa Claus. It's Gruesome Magazine. It loses some drama when you take out the, you know. Yeah, I know, I know. The actual. We got to keep, gotta keep yeah. YouTube happy. I am your host, <laughs> Jeff Moore, and this podcast is about horror films released between 1980 and 1989. Each episode, my co host Bill Mulligan, Chad Hunt, Crystal Cleveland, and I will tackle another classic or not so classic film from this radical, gory, influential, and gruesome decade. So usually we start with a few basic details of the film we're covering, move on to our first impressions, and then uh, trudge on down the road. I think that's a setup. Yeah. Actually, it's like get on down, get on down the oh, road. Get on down. Y'all remember yeah, that? <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's from, from the, the right. Yes. Uh, yes. Is. Yeah. But first, <laughs> we'll introduce the co host. First up is. Crystal Cleveland, the Living Dead Girl, and co-host of Gruesome Magazine podcast. How are you, Crystal? I'm great. Like the fact that y'all know the Wiz just makes me really happy. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. Yeah, well, I can't. Mm -hmm. I can't remember everybody. I think you missed. Oh, I have to ask you mm -hmm. that you weren't here. Did you watch The Ripper? Of course, I did watch The Ripper. Yes, and, and I loved The Ripper. I loved the Ripper. Okay, guys. Okay, let me let me tell you. Let me Muter tell you. La, la, yeah. <laughs> okay, so it's it's not perfect um, by any means, but God, it's so eighties. Like like her teaching the class, and then what's funny is you know when they did the dance routines in the class, they were actually using a lot of the oh, same right, footage. Right, right. I was right. dying. I was like, that's the uh, same thing I just watched. But color, yeah, color I be dumbfounded because I do not understand what is she talking about. <laughs> she's, she's, they had the, you know what they they had the dance scene, right? His girlfriend yeah. was the, yeah. Uh, the, yeah. the teacher, yeah. anyway, the instructor. All right, all right. Uh, the mo the movie is very I'm so silly, glad I, but I I'm did so like glad it. I asked. Oh, enjoy. <laughs> Yeah. Wow. Kyle McGarry is co host of Decades of Horror, the classic era, and the 1970s. Chad, it's good to see you. Thank you. Wow. You missed the last. <laughs> He's uh, so speechless. I've, 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 got, I've, got, I've got the vapors yeah. after what Crystal said. <laughs> 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 oh, Lordy, Lord. Oh, my. Last I do <laughs> declare. <laughs> And last do you believe you have given me the vapors, Chris? <laughs> well, tomorrow is. Anyway, um, last but not least is Bill Mulligan, writer, director, special effects guru, and co-host of Decades of Horror of the 1970s. How you doing, Bill? I'm clutching oh my, my pearls over what Chris I know. Yes, yeah, exactly. It's like I do, I do uh, declare. That's um, I do yeah. I mean, declare. yes, it's 80s. Lots of things were 80s. The Cold War, AIDS. I mean, I you know, it's just yeah. the Ripper. Yeah, it would have been a longer podcast if Crystal would have been there. Yeah, it would have been. Uh, yes. <laughs> so, y'all didn't really like it at all, at all, at all. Yeah, like, that's much crazy. No, pretty much that. Um, yeah. It was unanimous. All right, so let's go on to today's pick. Our film is The Ripper 2. The Deadly <laughs> What? Even Rippier. <laughs> Even no, Rippier. No, yes. Rippier. <laughs> Deadly Spawn, released in 1983, directed by Douglas Mc McKeon, Mc McCown, McCowan, McCown, yeah. uh, McCowan, written by Douglas McCown. Yeah. It's McKean. Uh, McKean. Story by mm. Ted Bohus, John Dodds, and Douglas McKean, and additional dialogue from Tim Sullivan, who was a uh, production assistant, high school student. In the film, um, the cast includes Charles George Hildebrandt, which I spelled wrong, Tom DeFranco, Richard Lee Porter, Gene Tolfer, Karen Teague, or Tig, James L. Brewster, and Elisa Neal. Uh, and special effects director is John Dodds, who we will discuss later. Filming locations in Gladstone and New Brunswick, New Jersey. 
released April 22nd, 1983. The budget estimated at $25,000. Hmm. Nice. And it's it's kind of believable, although I got to believe they did that. That probably all went to the effects. I think everything else was probably yeah. uh, volunteer. There was a lot of family stuff going on here. Um, but $25,000 budget, domestic box office was listed at $320,000 just a week later. That's a good return. Dang. Yeah, that's wonderful. Um, and this is what I love about titles. Uh, also known as The Alien's Deadly Spawn. Mm-hmm. Return of the Aliens Deadly Spawn. <laughs> Return of the Aliens the Deadly Spawn. Oh well. anyway. it has it has its own built-in sequels already from Yeah. 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 Yep. Well, what I read was they wanted to use the word alien because it had been rumored there was going to be a sequel to Alien. And so they thought oh, they could capitalize beat them to the punch. It. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. yeah. So and uh synopsis. Alien creatures invade a small town, and four teenagers, along with a young boy, attempt to escape from them. Eh, a lot more people yeah. try to escape than them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But there is, a lot of I don't know if I'd, I, I would have called that the mother spawn if it wasn't for the end scene in this movie. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, it's, I, it's amazingly yeah, it good, is. I think. It is. Yeah. It is. <laughs> You know, you know, it's so, funny. For the longest time, I thought there were two movies. I really thought Return of the Aliens: Deadly Spawn was the sequel to Deadly Spawn. Uh, Why uh, wouldn't I? They had different posters well, right, uh, yeah, on the, the box return. cover, so I figured one day I would rent them both and watch them, and I would have been royally pissed when I discovered they yeah. were the same movie. So, oh, uh, strangely enough, or maybe not, um, mm-hmm. technically, this is my pick, my week for a pick. Um, but Doc is the one that suggested this to me. He texts me and goes, this is, this is coming up on shutter. You guys have to do this. And I was kind of like, uh, okay. So I put it in there and he was going to join us, but I'll tell you what, there's some stuff going around this summer besides COVID and, uh, he's sick today, so he can't Mm. be here. So I guess it's just my pick. Hope you're feeling better, Doc. <laughs> you did good, boy. Yeah, yeah I, I like it. I like I it. Did, um, yeah. I didn't know anything about this. I hadn't seen it before. Um, it's obviously very low budget. And in fact, the first like maybe uh, 10 or 12 minutes, all you see are shadows and splashes of blood. Oh, yeah. The creatures. Yeah. And I'm thinking, oh, so I, this is the way oh, we're yeah. going. Uh, mm-hmm. But wow, when... Uh, the deadly spawn makes an appearance. Holy crap! And they don't they don't hold back. Uh, it's it's pretty cool. I thought it was great. I mean, obviously some of the effects are done a little bit on the cheap, but they look pretty damn good. And mm-hmm. it's 1983, so mm-hmm. um, I Early love this 80s. monster kid, Charles. Uh, that's just obvious. Uh, he's just awesome. He's he's like the only one who isn't scared to death of the spawn of the deadly spawn. And he's observing it and learning about it in very yep. calm, rational mm-hmm. experiments, kind of. Um, also loved the other group, the high school kids. They were sort of like budding scientists, and they find a little one and start dissecting it. That was kind of cool. Yeah, which is cool. Uh, and then the, you get this, I don't know, it's just another scene, but it's an awesome scene of the, uh, I guess it's the women's group. Uh, oh, yeah. Over, <laughs> yeah. over at Grandma's house. And she pulls oh. out this, she's writing notes down about her recipes or something with this little peas in a pod shaped pen. That's just awesome. I don't know why. Just something like that. I just love. Uh, and then they have some interesting food to eat. Um, we get we get uh, head removals. We get people thrown out windows. And, and once again, the kid is just awesome. So I'll, I'm going to leave it there. And... Uh, going to go in reverse this time. We'll let Chad go next. What what are your impressions of The Deadly Spawn, and when did you see this? Uh, first I heard of this movie was in Fangoria, and I saw a picture of this right. mother creature w- with bloody arms on the floor, and 
And I was like, oh, my God, what is this? What is this? And, and, and I kept waiting and waiting and waiting for this movie to be released. And it, it never got shown in, in my area. And, and uh, the only way I was ever able to see this was when it came out on, because I never found it on VHS. I'm sure there were copies out there, but never found it. But they came out with um, like an ultimate edition dvd uh, a while back and um i bought it and holy cow do i love this movie um i was reading i was so in love with this monster and this creature um and and what they did with it and you didn't know what it was you knew it came from outer space but you didn't know why or what its purpose was or, or anything like that it was just here to eat people <laughs> and and it was so cool looking. It was, yeah. I mean, you've got your average B movie, low budget movie of you know, and it's usually they end up putting a guy in a suit uh, somehow or covering him up with moss or this. Mm -hmm. This was a fully functioning super creature that just blew my mind. And and the movie's not that bad for a little indie film. Um, it's written pretty good. Um, the characters are interesting, um, I thought anyway, and um, yeah, it was just just a crazy, crazy romp. I mean, it's it's fun as hell, and and again, the the creatures just absolutely bonkers, uh, and I've, and reading about it too. Back in the day, um, I've always been a big fan of Tim and Greg Hildebrandt, the fantasy artists mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. and and um I, you know you come to find out that they shot in in one of, i think it was tim's house there yeah. and i think and i think the young boy is somehow related to one of them the ne as, a, as a nephew or yeah something. charles is his son i think is his son? son yeah and then the, I, you see tim hildebrandt as the doctor uh, taking the yeah. couple to the car at the end of the film i was just i'm just amazed by this I, I was just amazed by all this when i first saw it and just fell so much in love with this movie. I, it's always welcome, a welcome watch for me uh, on this one. So, yeah, it, I'm, my first impression was I liked it. Very cool. Uh, Crystal, <laughs> had you seen this before? Nope. This was my okay. first time. And, oh, oh, my God, I I can't believe that. The Okay, so, yeah, it's an early 80s film. Okay, and it's I can't believe how low budget it is. I can't believe how good the special effects are. And I can't believe how good the acting is, especially if there's all these family people involved. Because <laughs> normally, right. yeah. you know, I mean, death. it's good for an 80s movie already. But now that I know that these were like even family, it's like, wow, they did a great job. Like, I'm actually pretty shocked, um, especially the teenage. Well, I don't know why they could call him a young boy. He's clearly a teenager too. Like, right? I mean, he's not that young. Yeah, yeah. twelve, thirteen. He, yeah, yeah. twelve. Uh, I would say. See, to me, he looks like he's like fourteen or fifteen, easy. Okay. And the other kids are like eighteen. But I don't know. Maybe it's just because kids those, these days look different. I don't know. But anyway, um, I love the story. I mean, the movie has no point. Like, there's no point. Like, there, it's just a, it's just a creature movie. That's what it is. It's not like any, any big crazy thing. But I don't need any big crazy thing to be entertained. It was just perfect. It's like this meteor comes, these aliens come, they eat people. <laughs> there, there's your movie. Mm -hmm. There's your movie. And so it's very straightforward. The monster, I, I felt the same way as Jeff. When I first started watching it, it was like these shadow, it's like shadow puppets, it felt like. And I was like, oh, yay, yay. <laughs> Can't wait. I was like, so we're not going to have any special effects. And then I, I don't know. It was like a completely different movie because honestly, that beginning part gives you the wrong impression. It really yeah. makes you think that you're going to get these like, obscure kills that you're not going to see. And now it's, it, there's a lot of good gore here. Mm -hmm. There's like face ripping off. I mean, there's like, there's so much. Uh -huh. So, yeah. so like, I mean, 
I really was shocked. I loved it. I loved it. Like yeah. I, I have to say that it's like the the more it went along, the more I even enjoyed it more and more. Because for an eight, another thing is though, for an eighties movie, it makes sense. Because sometimes you know it doesn't make sense. The editing's mm -hmm. bad or what? I can't believe that they edited it, it even well. So good on them. <laughs> they were they were ahead of the eighties game for sure. So yeah, I'm I'm super glad that we did this uh, one. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm with you. I would not have picked it if Doc wouldn't have brought it up because I didn't know that. Yeah. I really didn't know anything about it. Uh, Mister Mulligan, how about you? Yeah, so like Chad, I saw this in Fangoria and. Um, various other magazines and I thought the monster looked great but with the budget and everything else I just assumed that like a lot of movies of that time with that budget it'd be one of those things where the monster looks good in stills but when it's moving not so great yeah. like the raw head rex kind of thing so this was really the first time I've, I've seen it like I said I would see it in the the video stores mm -hmm. and kept meaning to pick it up or its supposed sequel which I really did think was a different movie um and just never did so i was really happy that it got picked because it was finally my chance to see it and i was pleasantly surprised now i feel i feel like it was one more script rewrite away from being a near classic there's a lot of filler and the filler mm, oh is yeah obvious filler you know where mm, i feel like yeah. if they just maybe make these conversations have a little narrative thrust or something it just feels like we're we're watching people talk about stuff and and the acting is not as terrible as again i would have assumed but yeah the filler is pretty obvious then when when the monster when they cut to the monster stuff yeah it's like wow that was actually really really good um the monster's great the monster's practically iconic mm -hmm. you know we, we saw that that and that garish poster that the hildebrands did I'm with Chad. I always liked the Hildebrand brothers. Their stuff was, um, it didn't have the, it didn't have the, the sense of like Frazetta or the photorealism of like uh, the Vallejo and everything. Their stuff was really primary colors, like yeah. just cartoony, almost like, and... like cartoony, uh, like a like combination of like um, uh, Frazetta and Basil Gogo, you know, the guy mm. from uh, Famous Monsters. I mean, they, they they had did the Star Wars poster, one of the first Star Wars posters. It was great. So, yeah, the poster for this is terrific. I, yeah, I, yeah, really, well, I can't believe the budget was only 25000 because that yeah. monster looks, that monster is better realized, not just design. It's a great design, but also moves and does things better than a lot of real movies that were made by real Hollywood type people mm -hmm. at many many times the budget yeah yep you know you, you gotta you have to be super impressed and everything so yeah i had a fun time watching it and i have a feeling it's one i'm going to watch again and enjoy even more the second time and i yeah, did and like I the fact that at least the characters were the characters were interesting they weren't just sheep to the fodder they had yeah. some personality yeah. the monster mm -hmm. kid see i wish i'd seen this back when i first heard about it because i think <laughs> it really would have resonated with me as a monster kid that the monster kid's the one who keeps his shit together when exactly. uh, yep. you know the hero is just the the, the guy i thought was going to be the, the lead the hero of the thing kind of falls apart at the end so it's got a lot to it's got a lot he does to indeed fire. he does indeed um <laughs> so let's let's uh i left a part out here we need to uh go oh. to uh taglines Tagline. There's a lot oh, of Oh yeah, taglines by Chad. <laughs> so we'll bring the your... up to a screeching halt. Here. Yeah, there's your song. <laughs> oh, and by the way, just a, a little yeah. preview. Uh-oh. I will have a little intro thing. Oh, I cannot wait for this. For oh, no. uh, the next the next one. This just keeps getting done, worse and worse. It. I uh, so was going to make one and I never did, so I'm glad you did. Yeah, doing... I keep meaning to do that. Still trying to decide on the music. So, all right. Taglines with Chad. All right. First tagline. They're here and they're hungry. Thank you, Captain Obvious. Uh, first invasion of the body snatchers. Then alien. Now we're going to throw our hat in the ring with all these big budget, big time movies. You got okay. the deadly spawn. 
I never like it when they do that, you know, because yeah. it, it sets you up for, you know. Yeah. You're, you're setting up certain expectations that don't deliver in the movie. First, Gone with the Wind. Now, Blood of the Mummy. It's like, no. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they fell from space and and they were hungry. Oh, God, that's so bad. That's what I hear anyway. Yeah. It was a long trip, you know. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> who who right. makes this airline food? Mankind versus the ultimate eating machine, Honey Boo Boo. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> okay. Okay, first the media crashed on Earth. No one knew the mystery of the mutant spores inside. Okay. Is that really the tagline? I guess the writer did. But okay. Oh, the next two. The next two, like, build on each other. So. Oh. <laughs> All right. I'm not, okay, I'm not going to read the Spanish parts because I'll mutilate Yeah, that's that. fine. I wouldn't do No one will escape these carnivorous mutants. And the second okay. one. That's a lot. No one will escape the carnivorous mutilations these mutants make. So either way, you're screwed. Yeah, I'm not sure a, a, mut a mutilation could be carnivorous, but okay. I mean, carnivorous mutilation. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, there were plants involved. It could have been the carnivorous mutants. No one can escape them at all. Anyway, all right, tag lines. I almost forgot them. I just missed Chad. Should we should we have a song to take him out to? That was taglines by Chad. You know, just <laughs> intro and outro. Yeah, make your yeah. own music. So uh, Bill put some together some stuff here, uh, and this is the Hildebrandt poster, which is awesome. It's all Love it. Oh yeah! And for once, a poster, uh, the movie actually lives up to the poster. You look at that and say, "There is yes. no way mm -hmm. that this yeah. cheap ass movie is going to have anything like this." And mm -hmm. they do. It does. Absolutely. It does. And and so here's another one. I'm assuming. Oh, I like is... that too. Yeah. That's cool. Is that the one yeah. you have, Chad? Yeah. No, this one has the the one I have has the um, Hildebrandt poster on the front. Oh, okay. It just says edition, collector edition. It's got the cool little fake house in the bottom. As soon as you see that house in the movie, you're like, Yeah, what the heck? Is this Beetlejuice? I mean, come on, that yeah. is so obviously a model, but then nothing well, happens supposed and to be, you almost forget about it. Uh, Tim Hildebrandt's house, huh. and it's which. Then when I saw the cupboards, I thought, oh, these is this what an artist's cupboards would look like? Do you remember the cupboards in the kitchen? Oh, yeah. They were like, uh, they were an off color, and then they had like a the blue. spiral like leaf around it with flowers on it. And anyway. Yeah. It was... Is that the ones you're talking about? The blue ones with, like, I it looks so. really I modern. So. It looked like a very contemporary kitchen, if it's the one I'm thinking of. When I saw one of the first kitchens, I was like, that looks like... But literally they, what people are doing they today it, they the, the cupboards were actually painted with some hmm. not the kind of stuff you normally see on the cupboard uh oh. so the cast and you're absolutely right so uh the girl in the upper left is uh jean talfer and hmm. she was supposed to be the final girl but yeah what happened she the, yeah she couldn't come back so they had to they had to oh, offer, okay. <laughs> and that's why if you're oh, making okay. a low budget movie, you should always shoot in sequence. If somebody quits or, yeah. or for whatever whatever reason can't continue, you can just kill them. We'll just we'll just have it bite her head off and then spit her out the window, you know. Which yeah. came as a shock because she was a little character. I know, yeah, yeah. and I think that she was. she was supposed to be with the dude. I think so. They were probably supposed to let that other chick go, but she yeah. took her place. So that's fine i guess yeah and once she went but but the other side effect of that is once she gets off then you start to wonder about the rest of the characters yeah. that puts yeah. everybody in question kind of you know so right, who's mm -hmm. safe uh and then i think that's the uh well the one on the left is the brother the older brother frankie mm -hmm. played by richard lee porter or no pete i'm sorry that's pete but played by tom defranco um and then underneath those two are the aunt and uncle who are staying in the house for another week oh. or something. 
That yeah. that was an odd setup. I don't know why they went yeah. to that effort. Uh, except that the was I guess weird. maybe maybe because the mom and dad get off first because mm. they're going to get up and go and anyway which is another memorable scene and then the next one's down the one uh top left in the bottom four is the other girl that came on um kathy i think played by karen teig and i don't know who the one on the Right is I think that must be mom. I that think was that was the, mom who had the yeah. only semi-nude yeah. scene in the movie, which was weird. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was, wasn't it? Yes, yeah. yeah. Strangely uncomfortable. <laughs> it was. It was just seemed out of place, didn't it? Yeah. Uh, and I don't know who. Oh, the the next two are two of the women. I think the uh, one on the bottom the right is like, uh, club, yeah. uh, grandma or something, and the one on the left is somebody at the eating club, eating were, their uh cold slaw salad or whatever it was that had alien spawn in it yeah <laughs> this tastes bugger. terrible for some reason <laughs> yeah really the little bugger falls into the food processor Ooh. and then she walks over <laughs> to flip the switch to puree <laughs> puree here we go well, i'm gonna puree my green sauce i have a yeah, special just, ingredient this time yeah just to add a little more cool whip everything's fine yeah oh uh, lord that was a that was that was such a great scene, I thought. First off, <laughs> just the way they hell. talked to each other was just so so much chatter of sort yeah. of uh, Middle America church dinner yeah. kind of things or church, uh, and um, and then when but, the things. Uh, hey, look, I'm let's like, just I'll say, the women have look, laugh. let's just say <laughs> this movie's so ahead of the game though, because all those women were. Well, except for like one of them, apparently, were vegetarians, which I find really interesting for an 80s movie. The mm -hmm. fact that they talked about it and brought it up and did all. I'm like, <laughs> that's so unusual for a movie of this yeah. time. You know, like, what'd I don't you, think they cared uh, all that much what'd then. What you think of that, <laughs> Chad? The, the whole scene where they were eating? Well, yeah, when they get eaten, kind of. I mean, they don't get eaten. Well, that the whole, it was just, holy cow. It <laughs> just, boom, it just out of nowhere. These things just start coming out of the woodwork. And you, you're you having these little wormy things attaching to grandma's face, and she's crawling along. and, and uh, But the little sound it made when it fell into the food processor. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, hey. <laughs> yeah. You know, mm -hmm. I almost felt bad for all of guys. a sudden. Yeah, all these these women are all first thing is we see them each take a bite and it's not very tasty and they're all making a face yeah. and mm -hmm. and then uh, and I can't remember what happens the the direction your focus is taken out of the room and then all of a because sudden because the daughter the is trying or or her daughter is trying to call her husband. Oh, that's right. She's that's on right. the phone. Yeah. yeah. Then when we come Which, back, it's just carnage. Which is odd yeah. because she's like in front of some sort of like big cement block wall. Did you know that? I'm like, yeah. where is she yeah. in that? What? In the house. I didn't really. Yeah. Hmm. I love the, I love the thing too where the American Legion. Uh, you have the little creature set up in the front of the couch because you know there's somebody behind the couch with their arm up the creature's butt. Yeah. They couldn't move around, but they had them all <laughs> lined up in front of the couch. I thought that was hilarious. <laughs> Oh, actually, I thought it was really cool, though, when something hit the the picture frame and it moved and then they had like, yeah, all those cool. behind yeah, it. Mm -hmm. That was a good effect. So. I just I thought those women, they ripped that off. They then they run out of the house in the rain and they're all yeah. bloody. <laughs> they're yeah. running the car. I just I'm just trying to imagine what. You know who who they were and what they were thinking, uh, and uh, you know I just it would have been a hoot. Okay, those fellas, little, we're going to do the tea party from hell. Yeah, <laughs> those little those little critters, the little larval versions and everything, it reminded me so much of uh, Night of the Creeps. Yeah, and I thought yeah. they did it. They did a great job. Yeah, making them especially look like they're so swarming cool. around and everything. And you'll mm. see, uh, have a behind the scenes uh, photo that shows how they did it. And it's a very oh, yeah, simple yeah. thing, but it was very effective. Yeah, Again, yeah. These, these guys knew what they were doing. They 
I think that well, and James Gunn's Squirm, or was it not Squirm, yeah. but uh, oh yeah, what was the Slither? One? Uh, Slither, Slither. Yeah. Slither. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Oh, a lot. To, oh, a lot to this movie. Yeah. Right. So apparently, uh, they they came up with the story, and McKean's idea was to have a man in a suit and John Dodds was one of the producers and he's like, nah, I'm not interested in doing that. And he shows up a few days later with this idea. So holy mackerel. Um, yeah. Well, he had already done beautiful. a man in a suit movie with, um, he, one of his earlier ones, I think was, um, oh gosh. Um, I think Dodds had worked on one of Don Dollar's films or maybe I'm thinking of the wrong guy because I'm not seeing it here. I mean, honestly, oh, yeah. the, uh, creature, Night Night the, the creature alone looks like it cost. I mean, I'm trying to think of the time. Yeah, I, I, the creature I, alone looks like it would cost 10000 or something. It's oh, amazing. Yeah. It just, just the design and, and, and the way it's built, but the fact that they actually got it to move. Yeah. 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 If, this, if this had been a man in a suit uh, film... Yeah. No one would know about it. No, one this this it. creature is so nightmare fuel, and <laughs> and uh, once you see it, you can't unsee it. Type of thing. It just out of somebody's fevered dream. Just well, it's, it's just a big uh, thing with a mouthful of tea. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. right. It's very uh, Lovecraftian, almost. You know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's just the weird shapelessness and of it. But... There they are working on it. There's a lot of surprisingly, there's a lot of behind the scenes stuff that you yeah, can there find is, there on is. the internet. Um, so they were they were obviously yeah, proud of what they were doing. Good. They should be. Yeah. Um, so I love this scene. Uh I don't yeah. know if you have that. Maybe you don't have that one, but yeah, that's when her face gets mm -hmm. shredded. Yeah, the gore the gore stuff. effects. <laughs> I wouldn't say they're realistic, but they're definitely effective. Yeah, 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 they weren't anatomically the correct. Okay, yeah. <laughs> but I'm not saying that. But they still, they did a lot of it, and it was, yeah. you know, fun. Right. It was great fun. Uh, and there's Uncle, Uncle, what's his name? When they come back to the house finally, mm -hmm. the electrician. And we we see mm -hmm. why he's not answering the phone. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Mm -hmm. Can't come to the phone now. I've got these things crawling in my skull. Make your own um, dinner. So these are the, uh, you've got one label behind the scenes. Yeah. So there's the uh, slithering on the. Yeah. So it's real simple. You just, you make the little slithery thing in the floor and you have your latex dolls there that just go like through the track. And, and as long as you can't see the lines there, which they hid by putting some water on top of it, it's such a yeah. simple solution yeah. and it worked. It looked great. It really, I, I, the first time I saw it, I was like, did they have a wind up toy? It's not stop motion. Mm. It's like, how did you, how did you pull this off? And then I saw this and it's like, Durr. of course, yeah. that's how they did it. So just because it's effective doesn't mean it has to be expensive. Yeah. Right. Right. Something a lot of Hollywood things should learn from. But uh, obviously they knew how to make uh, these, these, uh, you know, you got to have some engineering skills be able to pull off an animatronic using the simplest stuff that you could you know your dad's you know wood bench could probably provide all the stuff they needed to to make this but it worked good editing good construction to begin with i'm just really super impressed yeah so at the end uh we think it's the you know the one in their house has been destroyed uh, that was eight his, feet or something, eight feet. Uh, yeah. yeah, with his yeah. Uh, his super cool ring of flash powder and yeah. looked like a little. Was there a little ring of C four? or Was that just something to hold it in there? Something I think it was just clay to hold the everything. Clay together. to hold it in. You know, chemistry sets out. back in the eighties were genuinely dangerous. You kids yeah, today yeah, have yeah, no yeah, idea. Were. I had one in the sixties. Oh, they were the yeah, best. Yeah. Oh, you could you could blow up the neighborhood. <laughs> But they made so anyway, flash powder really hard, uh, strong back then because it only took a little bit to blow that creature's whole face yeah. off. Oh, <laughs> man. Uh, and and the, the, there's the huge... Uh, well, the, the creature, there's this huge struggle. Uh, he's trying to plug it in. <laughs> just, yeah. That whole 
that whole extension cord thing. And, and, oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> and then the uh, one of the creature's arms or tentacles with a with a mouth on it comes and grabs him. And then when the creature comes in to take a bite, it bites it bites that instead of oh him. yeah right it actually accidentally takes it off well anyway. apparently so they were blind they you know they mm -hmm. they did that's another yeah. thing they were kind of ahead of their time the idea of the monster that is really yep. really dangerous but as long as you can keep your big yap shut and not trip over the christmas decorations yeah. maybe you won't even know you're there mm -hmm. yeah he had a hard time getting kathy to stop screaming to divert the monster up there um yeah. classic blunder so when it's when they're uh, they all go to the hospital, the house, you know, et cetera. Now there's like the uh, the local uh, watch team or whatever is out looking for them, and oh, no activity here. Oh, I just found a three foot one. Three foot. This one's we got an eight foot one over here in the attic, and then this happens. <laughs> Boom. After, you're, after they're setting you up for the eight foot is yeah. big. Uh, and there's John Dodds working on the. Working and and on do you, I wonder, do you think the folks who made Little Shop of Horrors had seen? This? I know that's this, what I, I, was I thought about. about. That. It reminds me of this that. This is the original ending. It looked like Audrey. Yeah. Right? yeah. What an ending! And, and if you've ever seen, if you haven't seen it, go on YouTube and look for original unused I ending of seen Little Shop of the Horrors. Ending. Oh, it's crazy. Even the creature, I thought the something about the shape of the mouth reminded me of Audrey a mm. little bit. You know that. Yep. Um, yeah. More teeth, though. <laughs> you couldn't have more teeth than this monster has. Mm -hmm. So, what else did I read about? Uh, John Dodds. Um, so, this, I, I mentioned this Tim Sullivan, who was given credit for additional dialogue, was a high school kid that they gave a job as a PA. His biology teacher was John Dodds' brother, mm -hmm. which is how he got connected to the film um anyway so i i didn't know that much i didn't really know anything about john dodds until i started reading about him and it's it's a pretty amazing career not that yeah. many film credits but there's a reason for that anybody well, see uh, that which what? is that he's been doing a lot of theater yeah he did uh beauty and oh. the beast for like for 15 years or something for Disney on Broadway, like wow. from 93 to 2007. Um, and you know, Disney pays well. 52,000 foam latex prosthetic pieces for six international productions of Disney's Beauty and the Beast. Wow. Wow. Good gig. Congratulations. Man. Well, what's awesome is they call, they call this movie his professional breakthrough. Because it got on so many magazine covers. Getting getting a gig like that where you're making prosthetics for a play that's going around the world is like the equivalent of an actor who gets cast as Mr. Whipple. You know, you're going to ride that gravy train for the rest of your life. Yeah, it means you're never going to get cast as Death of a Salesman or anything. But you know what? It's a steady paycheck. You put the kids through college. Mr. Whipple, Mr. Whipple was happy. If so, you like. Congratulations, Mr. Dodds. Yeah. Did you guys uh, ever watch the, the TV show Monsters? Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So he did. He like, did a bunch of that. Special makeup effect on what? Yeah. I can't wow. really tell. Five, eight, nine episodes out of. The, I guess it was not. Yeah. Hmm. Did a bunch of that stuff. Uh, severed head construction. So I think he was brought in to do. Well, here's. Poor guy, three see mechanical a, effects. My demon lover. Star a Slammer. Rat for Star Slammer. Yeah, Spookies. Uh, oh, X Files. Uh, I think yeah. he was brought in. If you look under makeup department, he was brought in. He was apparently a uh, the go to head cast maker <laughs> for the Santa Claus, Alien Resurrection, and X Files. Nice. So yeah, I, I was I was impressed. I hadn't heard of this guy, but he's he has a reputation. Um, apparently, there was a, a CNN article that referred to him as the world's foremost master of disguise. Hmm. Well, so anyway, quite master quite the history. Disguise. So what about what what scenes did you guys like the most? Mm. 
Hmm. Oh, I, I did like the, the kid snapping. You know, I thought that was clever. Yeah. And then, and then I, the kid was how he, he was. He was good. How he was like, yeah. <laughs> the whole basement scene I loved, where the kid mm -hmm. was just discovering. He's yeah. discovered his mom and the face gets ripped off. And yeah. that whole scene was just a knuckle. Holy cow, white knuckle. Or it just, well, uh, yeah, he sees his mother. Yeah, that's pretty cool. He sees brutal. a flesh falling off her face. And, yeah. and uh, at no time during this does he scream. Thank right. God. Well, he figured out that it real quick, I think, that it hunted by sound. I think, if I'm not mm -hmm. if I'm remember, remembering right. So it was... He, he looked, even though he looked like he was scared to death, he knew not to make a sound or it would come after. And uh, meanwhile, you could, some of the close ups where he's sweating, you know, he, he, it was just very, oh, I yeah, thought it yeah. was very, very well done. He, he really pulled that off where he was scared, but, but smart at the same time. And um, that head of his mother, by the way, is now owned by Gene Simmons of Kiss. <laughs> Oh really? That's hilarious. Yeah. And the way that the way that happened is Tim Sullivan uh, somehow found his way uh, producing the Kiss movie Detroit Rock City if, mm -hmm. from way back oh. in a couple of decades ago, I think. But at this point, but um, yeah, Tim Sullivan had held onto that head and said, "Hey, Gene Simmons is a horror fan. I'm gonna." take it and maybe get on his good side i think or something and, that's awesome but, yeah, that would put gene, someone on my good side yeah, i love you know, gene simmons owns that head that's cool yeah that's crazy i i love the scene in the basement where the the mother gets it as they they show the close-up of her shoulder you know and you know you know a hand is going to come on her shoulder yeah, yeah. i'm thinking a, like a tentacle or a head or something but i'm also thinking if it's a hand it's going to be like, you know, the top half of her husband who's cut in half and hanging there on the, you know, I don't know. Uh, the hand comes up, touches her shoulder, and she spins around. And it's it's out of the monster's mouth, like something out of frogs, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. From the... <laughs> yeah. I, just, I don't know why. I just was like, oh, my God, that's awesome. You know, I, I realized I something. I was just looking through. Um, one of the other things that, I remember from this film is that that shot that we had of one of the people working on the miniature that was on the cover of Cinemagic magazine, which I don't think most people remember Cinemagic, but it was a, a great, it, yeah. a great magazine about making low budget. Mean, one on the I think top it was here. yeah that very top picture. I think was yeah. was on part of the cover, and and this well, this that's is really the perfect cool. movie for Cinemagic type people. It's really low budget and really looks good. It was you know possible back then. It still is. I mean, even more so now to make good looking stuff. Um, well, it's really cool because I, bank. you cannot tell, or at least I couldn't in the shot where they look at mm -hmm. that when it's, when it's closed and it's just part of the landscape. I, that was seamless to me. I, yeah. It, it looked like it was trees and grass and rocks and stuff and phew, start shaking and the, the giant wormy opens up. It's just so fun watching people do practical effects. I mean, yeah, it, you know, is. folks nowadays, and I, and I understand it's a lot of work to do this. That is a tremendous amount of work and could be done probably in just a few days using CGI and using compositing and, and all. And why, why spend all that time and money doing something that you can do almost as well with, uh, you know, computer graphics. It's just that, I don't think you can do it as well for that kind of money, at least. If you got if you have Avatar money, sure, you can make it look just as good. But there's something about real miniatures. There's something about reality that looks more real than non-reality. It's why I yeah. always love motion, and I'll always love forced perspective and miniatures, and even movies that. All right, the movies themselves may not always be great shakes. I'm looking right at you, Planet of the Dinosaurs. But you know what? The fact that it's got all those miniatures and stop motion and all those other practical effects, I'll always forgive all the other sins. It, it reminds me a lot of the earlier Peter Jackson movies like Brain yes. Dead and, yes. and yes. Bad Taste. Yeah. But, yeah, they were horrible. <laughs> horrible. I was, I was thinking of that but, too. But they had 
there's there's heart there. You can yes. tell the people mm -hmm. who made the movie really cared about what they were doing. We're not going to let the fact that we cannot pull this off stop us from actually pulling it off. Right, right. And that really comes well, and through. It, and everything here is all about camera angles and, you know, yeah. where's the where's the puppeteers who's operating, you know, somebody somewhere is uh, making it move and the, and the mouth articulate and stuff like that. It just mm -hmm. was, uh, yeah, yes. All right. Well, I don't know. I we, Anything else we want to talk about here that we haven't touched on? What else we can say about? I mean, it, look, it's it's a it's a simple little film. It's got it's got charm. Um, it's unpretentious, you know, yeah. which I, I kind of like. It is. It, it's its only goal in life is to entertain you, give you the blood and the monsters. Um, surprisingly, not a whole lot of nudity except for mom in the beginning, which is still kind of yeah. Um, but that's okay. You know, it, it wasn't necessary. The, the characters are pretty likable. The acting is as good as it needs to be. It's not terrible. I've, I've seen way, way worse. And like Crystal said, boy, when you're casting family, that's usually the it's of kiss death. of death. For sure. What are you yeah. going to do? You're going to tell your nephew that he can't act his way out of a paper <laughs> bag. Stop smiling. You know, no, you just go with it. Um, but no, everybody, everybody did a good job here. And it's, it's no surprise that, um, especially the effects technicians went on to uh, other things because they they really did a, a super job. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of fun. I'm sorry I waited so long to see it. Yeah, me, me too. too. I'm. Thank you so much, Doc, for uh, yeah, Doc. Thank this. you. And uh, really sorry you couldn't make it. Yeah, um, me too. Yeah. We got a bunch of feedback. Ooh, we oh. do. I didn't see any when I looked. Let me start. Well, I added it just maybe oh, okay. half an hour, you know, 15 oh, minutes before we go. started. So, uh, Chad, if I have, a, I see a specific order here. Uh, okay. All right. Uh, Chad, uh, th these are comments on The Ripper, episode 212. Yay. Uh, okay. First one is Lone Wolf. All right. Lone Wolf says... Michael Jackson's thriller contact lenses were way better than the ones I saw in the river. <laughs> <laughs> true, okay, true, fair true. enough, yeah. yeah. I'm not a drinker, but watching this movie almost made me want to delve into alcohol for the first time. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Heroin for me. I didn't see any other way to get through <laughs> it. Um, much love to Tom Savini, of course, but he's cl clearly been in better stuff during this decade. Looking forward to the Deadly Spawn episode. By the way, my name's also Chad, but I'll keep Yay. the Lone Wolf moniker. Yeah, we're Don't another member you. of the Chad Club. <laughs> yeah, so awesome. That's yeah. awesome. But uh, in the words of a certain Scottish immortal swordsman, there can be only one. I forget. That's what I That's say. That's true. Mm -hmm. That's what I say. You know how many guys I've had to behead in the last 10 years? <laughs> Yikes. Uh, yes. <laughs> You guys are the best. Thanks, Aww. Lone Wolf. Uh, appreciate it, Lone Wolf. Yeah. Uh, Thank you. Excellent. Excellent. So I was going to have Bill read this one. Uh, kind of. Okay. Just so it looks Does like it... we're going in order. Okay. <laughs> right. Yeah. Bill from Jerry okay. Chandler on the from Ripper. Jerry Chandler. So this should be brief. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> About the Ripper. You did this movie, yet you shun the Loch Ness Horror, even with Commander USA. But hey, now is your chance to run the theme. After all, the only actor to go on to bigger and better things after the Loch Ness Horror was the inflatable monster. He was Jack the Ripper in the Bullshit or Not segment of Amazon Women on the Moon, and in my job, did a better job in the role than a few human actors who have played Jack. <laughs> As for the Ripper, dear Lord, oh dear Lord, Look, guys, if you're feeling this masochistic, I know of several films that are this poorly made, but at least have some stuff to laugh at. The Final Terror, The Return, Demonoid, a.k.a. Chad calls in sick that day. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> or even the brilliant train wreck that was student bodies. Come to think of it, I think they bought their contact lenses for the actors to use in Frankenstein Island at the same discount Halloween store they raided for the contact lenses seen in The Ripper. <laughs> Frankenstein Island? I mean, I probably own worse in my collection on DVD or Blu-ray 
but I wouldn't recommend it unless you promise to not make Crystal sit through it. I don't have a problem with the rest of you suffering. Uh, oh, so yeah. 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 Jerry. Jerry. Yes, now I know Jerry. 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 Don't, don't do that. Yeah. Don't, 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 don't do that. It's what he wants. Yeah. Jerry's All awesome. Right. <laughs> and also, to finish off the uh, the Ripper, we had Jerry is awesome. Uh, to finish off yeah, the Ripper, we have uh, Mikey Z. Mikey Z. Chad, another Mikey Z. masterful pick. Another masterful pick. This might be the worst movie covered by DOHE 80s or any iteration. I would Crystal would disagree. Watch, I would actually I, watch I, I, It was 2. funny. <laughs> I would actually oh, watch Howling 2 over this amateurish production. Outside of Tom Savini and the old biddy in the antique shop, there's nothing in America <laughs> yeah. in this dreck. Well, maybe some mm -hmm. of the gore effects. Uh. Straight to video isn't good enough. Straight to the toilet is a better destination for this poorly acted, poorly lit, poorly written bit of WTF. I always say that any film that gets produced and distributed is more than I have done. But after watching this, I don't feel like I've wasted my time on this planet. <laughs> I tried flushing it, but it wouldn't fit down the bowl. <laughs> Please do Howling 3 to erase the memories of this waste. Oh, I love Howling 3. All right. Maybe not. That might be a tad too extreme. Uh, <laughs> Crystal dodged another one on this. Maybe she knew in advance the attitude of this. No, I guess not. And Bill complains to me about Frankenstein Island as Bugs Bunny states the noive. Great podcast by the three Groot Crew dudes. Uh, so, yeah. So he had, I think on the last episode, Crystal, he had some suggestions for other movies we do. And one of them was Frankenstein Island. Which is just okay. so god awful. It's beyond imagining. I haven't seen it. So, but but oh. look, okay. I I just clearly I have a lot of grace for eighties movies. Clearly, so I'm starting to yeah, feel yeah. like like my radar is off because I'm really easy on the. I'm like that. Ah, I don't know. I thought this. I thought the Ripper okay. was hilarious. It's <laughs> funny to me. Stop. Like the boy, like, like, like she's sitting there, the teacher's sitting there, the physical, whatever, the dance teacher, and she's got a picture of her dude by her bed and stuff. I, it's just so funny. The whole thing's so funny to me. It's so, it's silly funny. It was, and it was the, it was like the guy's headshot, you know? Yeah, <laughs> like, it's like so funny. Yeah. Totally was. Uh, it was. All right. It was just like I said, it was like a Mentos commercial. Mixed up with yeah. Family Matters TV show or something. See, I think that's why people love Crystal so much. One of the reasons is that you get the feeling, even with these bad movies, if you were watching it with Crystal, you'd be enjoying it. Because she'd that's point out laugh. things like that. By that point, I was in a I, coma. When I go, <laughs> she's laughing her ass off, I think. Yeah. Just, yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, mm -hmm. Episode 211, The Mutilator. Evil genius. Evil genius. The mutilator, aka Friday yeah. the Thirteenth, meets Happy Days. True. Yes, I saw this one way back in my teens, but it was long enough where I have forgotten ninety five percent of it, so I had to watch it again. A few notes: no swordfish kill. I'm taking away points. Swing do wop rock. Swing do wop rock. Swing do wop rock. Do -wop waka rock. waka. Do -wop. <laughs> Swing dwop rock. Do -wop. Belongs do -wop. nowhere near a horn. Do wop wop. Walk. It's starting to sound like that Muppets like a wop 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 wop. Waka waka. Yep. Do -wop. Phenomenon. Da -da. Okay. Belongs nowhere. See, we get off track. Belongs nowhere near a horror movie. That music was dated back in 84. Aside from those takeaways, a fun little gore romp. Yeah. Okay. Will the Academy Award the script? No. But hey, it's a cheesy horror flick, right? Just have fun with it. Those decapitations and that final chop to the legs with the battle axe? Priceless. <laughs> yeah, it was. Mm -hmm. yeah, it was. It was. It was mm -hmm. great. I thought, well, that is the sharpest friggin' thing I ever saw. The guy can't get much yeah. uh, leverage on that axe with only half his body, no legs. But, <laughs> but still, I bring it up again. The the cop grabbing his leg, and it's like right there. I'm like, right, right. Yeah, like, why is his like, leg like right? <laughs> uh, not coincidental, but back to Chad. 
for Lone Wolf on the Mutilator. Ah. Saw the Mutilator and, um, yeah, never again. <laughs> Kills were cool, mm -hmm. but not enough to make this a horror staple for me. Oh, I can yeah. give you guys a, su a suggestion for a future episode. We've had plenty of vampire movies on DOH and not enough werewolf movies. I concur, sir. Oh, I love Wolfen. So how about we go with one that's technically not a werewolf movie? 1981's Wolfen. I've lobbied mm -hmm. for that movie, by the way. Oh, yeah. Guys, so wonderful. They never show it. It's never streaming. Yeah, it's never streaming anywhere, though. Right, um, right. Tom Noonan. It. Gregory Hines. It is, it is uh, but yeah. it's only pay-per-view right now. So, yes. yeah. Oh. But I love I love try to movie. avoid that. But. Edward James almost with some visual effects that maybe inspired 1987's Predator. What's not to love? Wolfen is a great movie. Yeah, we are. Uh, we yeah. will one day when they get their act together and stream it somewhere. Uh, the next film we're doing is another one that I've wanted to do for some time and and it was never streaming, so when I saw it was, we jumped on it. And we'll do that with Wolfen for sure. Oh, what is it? I can't wait to find out. Oh, what wait, it is. We'll wait. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll, know, we'll know in just a minute. But Wolfen turned me into a Whitley Strieber fan until mm. he wrote like 50 million books on communion. Then yeah. I yeah, yeah, yeah. went away. Mm. Um, went all right. Well. Uh, what's not to love? You're absolutely right. You're absolutely yeah. right. Uh, number... Episode 210, Class of the Titans, Lone Wolf again, this time Bill. Okay. Listen to this podcast on Patreon. Thank you. And I'm still Thank laughing you. at Chad during the intro. It was like Mel Brooks doing a parody of this movie. <laughs> Clash of the Titans was, as most 80s movies are, part of my childhood watching HBO and TBS. This film introduced me to the legend himself, Ray Harryhausen. He was the Stan Winston of his generation in some ways, giving audiences a big variety of cool-looking creatures to marvel at. The Medusa sequence still gives me chills to this day, and it's a spectacle we'll never again, we'll never see again in our lives. There's so many big name actors in this film, and I honestly think Burgess Meredith was my favorite of the bunch. Ursula Andress is probably one of the top ten most beautiful actors I've ever laid eyes on. And what more can we say about Lawrence Olivier? This was fun to revisit, especially after I revisited that weird Hercules film with Lou Ferrigno in it. <laughs> Love you guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing like bad stop motion to make you appreciate good stop motion. Oh, wow. Uh, and then, uh, Crystal, this one is also in class of the Titans, uh, Kevin Coleman. Okay. You didn't read one, though. But, okay, uh, I'll read I'm, it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> this is... This is one of the films from my childhood. It was in heavy rotation with Star Wars, Star Trek, The Flash, The Flash, I was about to say Flash, The Flash yeah. Gordon movie, I think that actually exists, and Star Crash? I've never seen Star Crash. Uh-oh. I concur. Yeah. Is it a good one? I concur no. with some of the host comments. It really is half a good movie. I still love it unconditionally. As a youth, I always thought the villain looked just like Kenneth Copeland. As an, <laughs> <laughs> uh, as an adult, I know that he could never be as evil as a televangelist. Oh, my God. Yes. Um, <laughs> I'm going to blow the babies away. I'm going to blow Am I getting that wrong? Star away. Crash is the one we just did on 70s, right? Yeah, yeah, uh, Bill. Yeah, that's a that's a seventies film, so and you funny. know, I think you'll actually like it a lot. I love uh, Flash Gordon. I love uh, love Star Trek. I love Star Wars. Remember, so yes, Star. You remember Crash, Maniac when we did Maniac with Joe yes. Spinell and okay, mm -hmm. well Joe Spinell plays the evil Count something Dooku. Dark Arm okay. or something. I'll watch it. It's got uh, Carolyn Monroe and Joe Spinell. And the worst and stop Marjo motion you'll ever see in your life. And, and David Gordon. Hasselhoff. Oh, yeah. And Christopher oh. Plummer. Christopher oh, okay. Plummer, see? The emperor yeah. of the universe or the galaxy or something. Anyway. All right. You got to watch uh, it. It's terrible. All right. Now you'll to uh, mm -hmm. House by the Cemetery, episode two, 209 from Evil Genius. As a lover of fine giallo, I loved the prominent advert for J and B scotch on the bus at the beginning of the film. <laughs> <laughs> I missed that. 
But I did see, he said, same with the fiddle faddle in the kitchen. I did see the fiddle faddle. Uh, product placement at its finest. To be honest, I didn't think Italy had fiddle faddle. That, that crossed my mind too. I was thinking, oh, fiddle faddle must be all the thing in Italy. I had to rewatch this movie again before I commented. I love Fulci's work so much. Mm -hmm. As I was watching, I was trying to figure out who the little ghost girl reminded me of. It finally clicked. She looked like a very young Patricia Tallman from Babylon 5 and the Night of yeah, the Living Dead remake. Did. I could see did. that. I could see mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Am, am I sad that Bob died at the end? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> Great movie. Loved it. See ya, Bob. Bob. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Evil. Um, and finally, Chad, Evil Dead Trap, episode 208. This is from Dorn Ravlin. I believe Toshiharu Akita, the director, didn't see Deep Red. He wasn't a horror fan or director. This was a job for hire. He started in porn in the 70s. He made violent movies before and after this movie. He committed suicide in 2010 at oh. the age of 59, although he did say on the commentary he wanted to do another horror film, and he did with The Man Behind the Scissors in 2005. <laughs> I should have put some uh, punctuation in there. That would have helped me <laughs> tremendously. <laughs> Chad. Uh, that's, I'm, sorry, I'm still just, that's so sad. He committed suicide. Yeah. What it is. Like a... It is. And I don't know why, but I want to see Man Behind the Scissors. That's Yeah, I'm curious now. That's got one of those names. The guy that did Evil Dead Trap. So, yeah, that's too bad. Uh and again, I haven't listened to that. There is some director commentary on the Blu-ray. I should listen to that and see what that is. I, I hate to hear stuff like that. Mm. Well, that's it. Uh, thank so, you, hey. thank you, thank you, everybody. Yes, thank oh, you. Oh yeah, everybody. I love this. Is my this is probably one of my favorite parts of the show. Mm -hmm. Honestly, keep the comments fun. coming. We have the yeah. uh, the smartest, funniest fans. I think. Uh, or listeners, or viewers, or whatever, commenters. For sure. Uh, we do. Yeah. So uh, on the uh, Gruesome Magazine YouTube channel, please subscribe, like, make comments. Watch us. You get to see what we look uh, like. That's fun. Share it. Yeah, you yeah. can see us. For oh, that's fun for you. I keep trying to remember to talk about the, the visuals that we show so that when they go to the pod, audio podcast, oh, yeah. we're not oh, just no, going, oh, that's really about. cool. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, we really <laughs> love the colors there. <laughs> oh, man, can you believe how good this is? Gosh, I didn't anyway, yeah. um, Look at the so point. Anyway, uh, we're experts, yeah. guys. We're experts. <laughs> you can see the videos on YouTube or the audio uh, versions on uh, most podcast apps that I know of. Uh, so the videos are more episode. fun. Watch the videos. Watch, yeah. Well, unless unless you're driving and you're listening to podcasts to stay awake, yeah. don't yeah. watch the videos while you're driving. Jeez, chat. Right. Right. That's what I do. Uh, and we know that's what I do too. <laughs> I don't watch it. I kind of listen. That's why I need a new car every year. Yeah. Well, we hear about some people that are, uh, you know, that listen at work too. You know, so you're, yeah, yeah. You have to, you have to hope they're control. not air traffic controllers. Yeah, no, <laughs> no. Uh, so that's it for this episode. But every two weeks, we'll be focusing on a specific film released between 1980 and 1989. Next up, we tackle one chosen by Bell. Hey, it's, it's a sequel to a movie that is an absolute masterpiece. Now, the yes, sequel is not a masterpiece, but it's still, as I remember, it's been a while since I've been able to see it. A fun film, yeah, and it's The Fly Two. I think I think it it's freaking amazing. I love that. Honestly, I love that. yeah. That it's Eric Stoltz, right? more, It's got a lot more monster yes. in it, and that's good. And yeah, how? Uh, he's so endearing that in this role. It's it's yeah, another right. it's 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 heartbreaking sweet. ending. Yeah, yeah. Well, what this check one? Check us out in two yeah. weeks. Yeah, yeah. And be sure to, uh, uh, you know, if you want to help us out uh, money-wise in terms of paying for servers and licenses and all that stuff. And we try to uh, attend some It certainly isn't for employee payroll. News. <laughs> it's not for employee payroll. Uh, what? You don't get paid? Oh, sorry. You could join, uh, uh, join us on Patreon. 
And one of the things you'll get is you will get decades of horror at least a week early and up till about up to about 12 days early. Oh, wow. um, I, I used to do them always a week early, but now I'm just going to start. We're just going to put them out as, you know, within a day or two when we record them. So oh, that make, that's good. Uh, so, yeah. Think of how envious your friends yeah. will be when you like you're saying, oh, yeah, I was <laughs> listening to it last <laughs> night. They're like, Ooh, you hear that? What, you what hear they it? say? Please Wouldn't you like to know? <laughs> yeah. Happens all the time. Yeah. All the time. Hey, yeah. I listened to DOH the 80s last night and you didn't. So uh-huh. you can eat that bologna <laughs> right. sandwich. You know, you I know. was thinking about a fried bologna sandwich earlier today. That's so weird. I've yeah. I just what? ended the whole conversation. What the hell, What's guys? Not, Y'all are all to that. You're on, the, you're on the right track. A little bit of Y'all are all. <laughs> what are we supposed to say? Did you tell us more about this dream? No, I was said I was thinking about it. Yeah, I was yeah. just thinking I about mean, a fly, when you fried you fried bologna the bologna, sandwich. Did you make the cut? You know how it curls up. Did it you curls up. Cut? Yeah, a yeah. cut. Awesome. So it so it doesn't curl up. Oh. <gasps> You what I didn't in. know. You make the cut in it from the middle to the outside. Oh my curl, god! Well, now I'm glad you brought it. It, it looks like it looks like a pie with That's... a very small piece taken out. Yeah. Is, you know, so. I next did week not for know. How to make a pizza on Doh? Yeah, more life yeah. hacks on Doh. Wow. That's cheap. Yes, and uh, we'll be glad to help you with that special ingredient in your green sauce puree. Oh yeah. Bzzz. All right. Um, Wait, that, that does not sound thank right. you, everybody, me, so much. Me, Chad, me. Bill, Crystal, appreciate it. And uh, <laughs> thanks to all our listeners. Catch us again here in two weeks for another great horror movie of the 1980s, as only decades of horror can do it. Yep. Say good night. Good night. Good night, folks. <laughs>